What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's Liverpool versus Chelsea at Anfield tomorrow and before I start this preview I just want to say if you guys haven't done so already please don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and don't forget to press that bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever I release any new content. This was meant to be the midway point of what was a very rough week for Chelsea initially but we started this in a perfect way with a dominant victory over Manchester United on Sunday. We were meant to be facing United, Liverpool and Wolves in the space of seven days and that that week could have gone very good or very badly depending on the first game but Manchester United we were the better side from the first minute to the last. Uh, the tactical setup from Frank Lampard was built to perfection. United could barely find their way into our box and just had, had to resort to drawing fouls. And for Chelsea, the press just kept pushing Manchester United back. And me personally, I'm hoping for more, this, more of the same in the lineup, but I'm going to get towards that at the end. Now, Sunday, like I said, was the start of a tough week for us, but we started that perfectly. We have to look forward to Liverpool. We can't focus too much on the semi-final or look too far forward in towards the FA Cup final because we have to face the challenge that is facing us right now at hand, and that is a Liverpool side that is leaps and bounds better than Manchester United, regardless of their recent form. Now, personally... I think because we helped them towards the league title after beating Manchester City, they should be playing their B team against us just to be a bit more favourable towards us. And also for their hay against Manchester United in the top four race, I would like to see them play a weakened side, but we both know that that's not going to happen. And also, like we said previously, Liverpool's form has fallen off a cliff ever since they won the Premier League title. And to be honest, they dropped. A, they were dropping a little bit just before lockdown as well. And they are one of the clubs that have benefited massively from the lockdown. I'd say to an extent Spurs as well, a couple of other clubs as well, but I ain't got them in the top of my head right now. But ever since Liverpool became Premier League champions, they've had two wins in their last five. The only teams they've beaten are Villa and Brighton. Uh, and when they face tougher opposition with more to fight for, they have struggled a bit more. They face the Manchester City side who are playing for pride straight after losing the title and they got smacked 4-0. They beat Villa and Brighton but there's two teams on the lower side of the table and they lost to Arsenal as well in their most recent game. Now like I also said for Liverpool, their legacy has dropped so badly and I'm not even saying that as a thing post lockdown or post win the league. In December they were talking about potentially being quadruple winners, potentially going invincible, and that was all gone within the space of a month. They dropped a two goal lead they dropped a two nil lead to Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. They lost their potential Invincibles record to Watford 3-0 away. And they got knocked out of the FA Cup by yours truly. Now, no one's going to speak about the Carabao Cup because we all know the situation there. The way that they've been playing recently has made me a, a lot more confident going into this game. Because look at the teams that they've lost to. And they've both been teams in the bottom half of the table. When they face any team with potential quality. And I don't want to say that in a way to be arrogant. Because our record against the bottom five is shocking regardless. But whenever they face tough for teams they've struggled a bit more and that's given me the idea that if you go into that game and you want it more than them you can get it because Liverpool's mentality has gone down a couple levels since they won the Premier League title and to them it's a shame because they were looking like they were going to be the most dominant side in Premier League history the way they were blitzing past teams and they were unbeaten until February I think that's the second longest Premier League streak second only to the Invincibles like I know we went 30 games unbeaten or was it 40 games unbeaten at some point but it wasn't in the space for full season from September with Liverpool they were go they were potentially going unbeaten and it all just collapsed from them also why I'm thinking it's it's a way you got to look at both parts on one side, Liverpool are not going to want to be overshadowed yet again, especially on their big day, especially at Anfield against us, because that's just shades of 2014 again. If they focus too much on the title coronation during the match, hopefully we can take advantage of them being distracted. And personally, I think the fact that they've taken seats off the cop end just to put the little coronation stand up in front of them could play into our hands as well, because that's going to be the first thing these guys are facing in the second half. And hopefully as the game ticks on, if the game's more in our favour or Liverpool Liverpool aren't in the lead hopefully their mind starts to drop a little bit and their mindset starts to fall and I'm thinking with Liverpool I don't want to underestimate them in any way because on paper that is still the best team in the league by a country mile but up here I think we can get them and I think if we, if we play this game mentally right I think we can go and we can get a lot more than we potentially think we can get. Now moving on to team news Kante is out with a knee injury and Liverpool are going to be without Henderson, Milner and Matip. 
but I don't think that's going to change much in the lineup. Once I go into the lineup, it, you guys are going to understand what I'm talking about. And I, I'm going for more or less the same thing against Manchester United. Now, Wednesday is nothing to Liverpool except an empty party for them after the match, but. For us, the race for the top four isn't letting up. And also, because of Leicester losing 3-0 to Spurs, thanks Jose, by the way, we can potentially guarantee our top four position with a win against Liverpool. Manchester United are going to be playing West Ham at the same time as well, so hopefully agent Declan Rice can turn up as well because our agents have been saving us a lot this season. But we still have to do our job. If we can get a win against Liverpool, top four is guaranteed. If we lose... Which, I'm not going to lie, the way the top four race has been this season and last season is why you've also got to be a bit careful because our competitors have been inconsistent and we have been inconsistent. The good thing about United playing West Ham at the same time is that we can't focus on the United match and it's not going to be lingering in our heads. We ain't going to know what's happened. Well, the Chelsea players aren't going to know what's happened at West Ham until that game is done. So hopefully West Ham can turn up against a top six side that isn't Chelsea for once. But... Hopefully, we just, we just got to hope and pray and we just got to focus on ourselves as well. Now, moving on into the lineup, uh, I'm going to go for more or less the same formation, a couple changes, but I want to see us play five at the back as well because I think Liverpool's width is something that we have to try and play against. And Liverpool love playing with court, with crosses coming in from the far side, from Trent Alexander-Arnold and from Andy Robertson as well. So if we can play five at the back, we can have our wing backs try and focus more. We can have Azpilicueta and the left centre back as well try and double up on them because they are going to try and play a wide, expansive brand of football. And their game is heavily reliant on crosses coming in from the full backs. So hopefully if we can play the same sort of a formation and we keep to the same intensity of pressing we can try and get a better result out of them but I'm going to keep to the same formation I'm going to change the goalkeeper Kepa's going to go in goal because Caballero was playing because it was a cup game and he was trying to be respectful to the second string goalkeeper but Kepa's probably going to start this game and hopefully it's a it's a better performance from him as well we start seeing more consistency from him because Kepa has struggled this season and as much as I'm a Kepa fan it is getting harder to defend him so I'm hoping Kepa has a promising performance today Reese James after that amazing performance against United which to be fair my player ratings I didn't give him enough credit for so I'm sorry for that Ke Reese James has to start a right wing back um, I'm going to put Aspi next to him at right centre back as well because I think that is, that's his best position right now and also his attacking ability from that position is unmatched so I'm going to put him in that position too Rudiger I'm going to put him in the middle because I thought he was very calm in there and I think he's a lot less rash in that position there's a much more options for him to work with and hopefully as a karma style of play there and i'm going to put zuma next to him as well because i just don't think zuma should be benched and right now bias for equator he's our best defensive player going uh, Marcus Alonso is going to play at left wing back because I think he's a better left wing back than Alonso is in my opinion and we're going to keep the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot in the middle because those two players just complement each other perfectly and their understanding is just second to none. They both complement each other perfectly, and I don't. I would rather. I don't want to see either player playing by themselves or with someone else because I think the midfield is just going to get more open and more exposed from them. Liverpool have a very strong pressing midfield as well too, so we have to keep Mateo Kovacic in there, and Jorginho will be key there as well to slow down the tempo of the play and to keep the possession and the game going in Chelsea's favour. Now I'm going to put Pulisic back into the lineup as well because he was out with a small niggle, but that does also mean he's going to be more fresh and going forward he's been our best player post lockdown by a mile so he has to start i'm going to rest willian as well because i think willian just needs a rest he started every game since lockdown and i think more games we've been doing that the more it's been to his detriment i think now is a good time to rest him i would have put him in i would have put hudson adoy in but the way lampard was speaking in his press conference he sounds like he's preferring him coming off the bench so far for now so as far as i'm concerned we stick to that and also because I want to keep the press strong as well. And Mason Mount is going to be great for that position. So I'm going to put Mason Mount as the other forward as well. And Olivier Drood has to start up front. Right now he's our starting striker for me. He's going to offer a lot pressing high up the field as well. He's going to be cutting passing lanes as well. And with the amount of crosses that should be coming in from Reese James, Aspie and Alonso. It will be perfect for him to try and snap up a couple of them. But guys, this is my Liverpool versus Chelsea preview. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comments section below don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel as well and i'll see you guys after the game for another preview for another review of the game take care and up the chels